You guys have both seen the movie, right? Oh, yes. yes. In <laughs> fact, we uh, watched it again last evening. Oh, it, sure. it looked for detail. <laughs> right, so this is all starting to look yeah. familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you some things you might not know about the movie, and I'm going to start with talking about Gene Shepard. Now, Gene Shepard wrote the stories that this movie was based on. He was a radio um, talk show host and a writer. And he used Rafi as his little alter ego to tell his stories. Now, you do actually hear Gene throughout the movie. He is the adult Rafi voice that you listen to throughout the movie, so that's Gene. If you want to read more about the stories, um, starting with this movie, you can read um, In God We Trust All Others Pay Cash. The stories, most of the stories from this movie come from that book. Now what happened was Bob Clark was a big fan of Gene Shepard's and he had the idea of taking Gene's stories and putting them together as a movie. Um, and Bob, nobody really cared for about the first six, seven years he had this idea and then he directed Porgy's. And Porgy's, of course you know Porgy's is right. Yeah. It was a huge mega hit for MGM and so um, he had a lot of clout and but more importantly they wanted Porgy's 2 right away. And so Bob said he would be happy to make them Porky's too if he was allowed to make that little Gene Shepard thing first. And so with their bags against the wall, they gave Bob $4 million to make this picture. And that's how the movie got made. So we really owe it to Bob. Now the movie really doesn't have anything to do with Cleveland whatsoever. So it's kind of interesting why they filmed here. Do you guys know why they filmed here? No, but it did amaze us why they just didn't say that it was filmed in Cleveland because they said it was upstate Indiana. Yeah, Northwest Indiana, yeah. yeah. Now, um, the fictional city that the movie takes place in is home in Indiana, which is what Gene Shepard always referred to he, this is the way he fictionalized Hammond, Indiana. That's where Gene Shepard was from, it's where he grew up. And so that's why the movie takes place in Northern Indiana, even though it wasn't filmed here. And that's why it wasn't really an option to say that it, that it was in Cleveland, because this is really about Gene Shepard, and Gene Shepard was from Indiana, right. so that's where this took place. But they went down to home in Indiana in 19, or home in Hammond, Indiana in 1983 when they were scouting to film the movie. And Hammond wasn't going to work anymore. In fact, Gene Shepard said it wasn't going to work anymore. It didn't look like his boyhood home anymore. It didn't look like 1940. So they went scouting around. They scouted 20 different cities. And they came here to Cleveland. And Cleveland had two things that they really liked. First of all, they had this neighborhood, which is right next to downtown. It's very urban, it's very industrial, and it very much still looks like 1940 here. And so they, they knew that yeah. this neighborhood was going to work for placing the Parker's home. A little bit of an insult, but we'll take it. But that we look like 1940 still, but... Love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other major reason why they came here was Higby's department store that, in the movie. Mm -hmm. Now, Higby's was a real department store here on our public square in Cleveland. And in 1983, Higby's agreed to leave up all of their Christmas direct, uh, decorations past Christmas. Oh, good. To let this little um, low-budget film come in and film in the middle of the night. And so that was a huge draw to bring, to bring the um, film here as well. So those were the two reasons why they came here. So all of the Higby stuff was filmed here. Just so you know, Higby's is not around anymore. It turned into a Dillard's and then closed in 1992. So there's no longer Higby's. You can still go downtown and see the building and the Browns plaque and everything on public square that you see in the movie. Well, do you think they still have the decorations stuff in downtown in the square? Um, today? Like, did they take them down yet? Mm, I don't think so. They're not as, they're, they're not going to be like what you saw in the movie, though. Mm -hmm. But, of course, because during the filming of the movie, Cleveland did leave a lot of its decorations up, but the filmmakers also asked Cleveland specifically to take down certain things so that they could add decorations that were more in tune with 1940. Right. Of course, it was 1983. Right. So Cleveland was, um, um, very accommodating to the filmmakers. They completely closed down Public Square in the middle of the night to let them film. They left up a lot of Christmas stuff. They let them change things, like um, they changed the bus stops to look more like 1940s bus stops. But a lot of that were things that the filmmakers did, not that the city did, or not that it what it looks like now. Now, what month did they make this movie in? They filmed from January to March of 1983. And then they just waited until they got the perfect day for the perfect snowstorm. No, not at all. Actually, all, for all of the Cleveland scenes, it was not snowing, and so they had to manufacture that snow and it got very, very expensive. They used a variety of things. They trucked in snow from Michigan. They used fall snow, like a snow making machine from um, Randy Wine Ski Resorts just south of here. They used soap flakes, soap bubbles, potato flakes, rolled vinyl. They used everything that they could find to make the appearance of snow where there really wasn't any. You know, you just can't count on Mother Nature sometimes. The winter of 1983, it was, just wasn't snowy here in Cleveland. Now, the majority of the movie was actually filmed in Cleveland, or in Toronto, in Canada. And some of the scenes that were originally planned for Cleveland got moved to Canada because there was free snow up there. Namely, the biggest one's probably the schoolyard. 
it was just going to be too expensive to layer an entire schoolyard of false snow. So there was free snow in Canada. Um, the other major scenes that were filmed here in Cleveland, aside from Higby's, I already mentioned downtown, all the public square parade yeah. scenes were filmed here. The alley when the kids are running back and forth to school getting chased, mm -hmm. that was actually a field about six blocks north of here that they mocked up to look like an alley. That was here. And then all, of course, this house and the, and the scenes around this house. That's Everything else was pretty much up in Canada. Now, the, um, they picked this house for a couple main reasons. First of all, they just liked the look of the home. Even though this was a duplex, it didn't look like a duplex from the outside. It looks like a single family home. And they like the wraparound porch, they looked like the look of the house. But more importantly than the look of the house, the situation of the house was very important. In the backyard, we border on the steel mills. And so they knew that they could get shots of the house with the stacks and the smoke rising right behind the house. Again, that instant visualization, this is supposed to be representing Hammond, Indiana in the 1940s, which was a steel making town. And that plays a big role in Gene Shepard's work, actually, that he was from a steel town. Over here on the side, we have the Bumpus's house. And you can look at them me. The Bumpus is, that's the house they used as the Bumpus's house and the Bumpus's yard. And as you can see, they have a vacant lot. They have a double wide lot. And that double wide lot was hugely important because it gave the filmmakers room to store equipment, like that snow making equipment I talked about. Wow. It gave them room to build scaffolding to get those nice panning shots of the neighborhood. And it also gave them room just to be able to see this house, almost like this is a corner house or, or next to a field or something like that. And space is a premium in a neighborhood like this, which is very urban and very congested. And so that space was very important to the filmmakers. Out here in the, in the front, we're at a T intersection with Raleigh and West 11th Street. And T intersections work really nice for making movies because it gives the filmmakers the opportunity to move around and get lots of different angles. So just to name a few scenes that were filmed around here. Um, in the backyard, all of the backyard stuff was filmed here. So that's Black Bar, Christmas Morning, Baby God, that was all filmed here. In the driveway, all of the running gag scenes of the old man and the Bumpus hounds, those were all filmed here in, filmed here in the driveway. Opening, um, opening scene of the movie, Ralphie and Randy run off the porch and they run up Raleigh Avenue. You actually see our museum house and our gift shop house. But when the kids are going to school, they're going up West 11th Street right. right here. So when Randy falls down and can't get up, that was filmed here. Oh. When Ralphie comes home from school and gets his decoder pin, that was up right out here on our front stoop. When Ralphie has his blind fantasy from eating too much light boy soap, that was filmed here on our porch. And so on and so on throughout the movie, that was just naming a few. But I mentioned that this house was a duplex, and I didn't mention anything about the inside here. This house was a duplex. This entrance right here that you see the creek get delivered through, this was the entrance for the downstairs. And the entrance in the driveway that you see the old man and the bumpus hounds go into, that was the entrance for the upstairs. But the filmmakers really didn't care about the look of the house because it was too small to film in here. Even if the house looked as great as it does today, it would still be too small to film in here. It's pretty much just standard practice that you pick a outside of a house, but then the interior scenes are just set work, you know. Yeah. So this is no different. Well, what about, is this where they had the car? Oh, yeah. Right and all through here. Yeah, basically anytime you see it outside, it, it was filmed here. Anytime that it's just purely an anterior scene, then it was done up on the set, and so that was in Toronto, which is why the Canada scenes come into play. They were already filming so much in Canada that moving scenes within Canada wasn't a big deal. But yeah, he pulls right up here in his 1937 Oldsmobile, and he's won his major award. You see Ralphie yeah. hanging out the window. That's filmed right here. Well, um, whatever happened to that car? The car that they used for the old man scenes for the Cleveland one, a couple of people have claimed to have had it, but we haven't been able to substantiate those claims. And so, you know, we don't really know. For all of the cars in Cleveland, or at least the vast majority of them, it was groups of audio enthusiasts who donated the cars oh, for the making of the movie. I because see. they used.